the agenda. So this is just the agenda or the agenda, yeah. Um, uh, I have a, a comment on, on the closed session. Okay, so we're on the agenda. Uh, yeah, but you just you didn't stop and ask for comments in the closed session. Okay, sorry. Uh, any comments on the closed session? Yes. Um, so it is closed session. It, this involves the Millers. I assume it's the same Millers, the uh, 90 year old plus Millers that have lived in the district for 50 odd years. I don't know what you've been spending on lawyers fees, but I do know at the initial outset of this, the Millers were quite uh, agreeable in uh, a compromise solution. And it looks like you're spending a lot of money, time and effort, and really a very painful experience for our uh, good neighbors of 50 years. I hope whatever you're doing, that you resolve it quickly and without further cost to the people of Marinwood. This is not Marinwood values. Thank you. So back to item D, the agenda. Um, hearing no comments from the board. Any, any comments from the public on the agenda? Uh, no, I'm not hearing any comments. Back to the board. I'll call the uh, motion. All those in favor? All right, motion carries. Do I have a motion for item E, the consent calendar? So moved. Second? Second. Uh, any discussion? No The, we have about four grand for JARPA. That was for the uh, pole in the park. Yes. Anything else from the board? Any comments from the public? Uh, yeah, that uh, first of all, the, the JARPA is that just for uh, is that the consultant's fees or is that uh, just the application fees? The application fees. Okay, so we'll have another check for that. All right. Um, so yeah, I just really have one question tonight, and it's uh, related to questions. In the past, you are paying employees, calling them vendors when they're actually payees, vendors are people that provide you with goods and services, and it seems like uh, we don't have good tracking for a lot of our expenses. Uh, I would like you to pay attention to that. I think it is, it is irregular accounting, um, and uh, the, the, you know, we deserve, we deserve uh, accountability. Thanks. Thank you. Any other comments on the consent calendar? Okay. Back to the board. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Moving on to item F, public comment open time for items not on the agenda. Is there any comments? Stephen? Yeah. Um, so, uh, last week uh, I was very rudely attacked uh, by one of the members uh, in a very insulting way. Uh, and not only does it violate decorum, it is really just meant to uh, quash uh, public speaking. And I notice at these kind of comments being repeated over and over again, um, I'm taking note of it, and uh, I would wish, as the board president, that you uh, observe proper uh, parliamentary rules of engagement. Thank you. Thank you. Any other public comment on Linda? Yeah. Um, first, I'm not sure if everybody or anybody even read my memo about the Firefly Camp counselors are excellent. I walk with Bongo over to the tennis court sometimes and I have to rest at the picnic tables and I happen to be watching there were four, I think, four fireflies in their counselors, and they were fantastic with the girls. They were interacting with the girls. They didn't leave any of the girls out of anything. They were just wonderful. Compared to 
a week before when I saw a different bunch of camp counselors sitting around, four, four of them sitting at a picnic table, chit-chatting, chit-chatting, chit-chatting for 10 to 20 minutes. And I did write a scribbled note. I hope you got it, or I hope you read it. But those four camp counselors were not paying any attention to the girls. And I really thought it was kind of scary because I did watch one girl walk off behind the tennis courts and maybe she was just going down to the bathroom, but the, the camp counselors were chit-chatting, chit-chatting, and the little girls weren't eating or anything. They were just sitting on the ground talking or playing patty cake or shaking hands with each other. So in any case, you've got, you've got to um, make sure that the camp counselors are interacting with the kids because the parents are paying a lot of money for this, and for the girls or boys or whatever, just to sit around and do nothing is a waste of the parents' money. But on the other hand, um, I was wondering if, you know, I love dogs and I love birds, and I was wondering if uh, the camps and the horseshoe people can be proactive, okay? Proactive is a good word for me um, in, in preventing injury, saving injury to dogs and injury or death to birds. And at the horseshoe pits, there's bottle caps all over the place. And Mr. Shea probably knows it uh, because I've seen him over there. And bottle caps everywhere, they can really hurt dogs' feet when we're walking by. You know, we wear shoes, but the dogs don't. So they could cause damage to dogs' feet. But I've also known cigarette butts, cigarette butts, cigarette butts everywhere around the horseshoe pits. And I recently saw a video of a mother bird feeding her baby chick a cigarette butt. Now, cigarette butts can cause terrific injury and can even kill the animals, as can the balloons that are left behind after water balloon games. And I'm hoping that someone will make sure that the kids or the counselors or whoever picks up those water balloons because, again, little teeny red and blue and green water balloons can also uh, be picked up by birds, can injure birds, can make them sick, can make them strangled to death, and you might have a, a dead bird, or almost dead bird flopping around, and you don't want to have kids see that. So I just, I was just hoping that um, you would be able to follow up on the bottle caps, the cigarette butts, and the balloons. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, all right, moving on to MMG district matters. Item one, we're in Lafco. We have the draft scanner file leached on the municipal services report for review. Eric, you want to? Sure. Uh, yeah, I won't speak long. Um, Mr. Jason Freed, from who's the executive officer of Marine Lafco, is actually here tonight, so I'm going to turn it over to him. Uh, you've all received a copy of the report that came out not too long ago. Again, uh, and as I'm sure Mr. Freed will explain, this is still in draft version. It's in the Lafco public comment stage. Uh, they do have a public comment, uh, public hearing coming up on, as part of their August 8th meeting. Uh, otherwise, I will ask Mr. Free to take over and uh, go ahead and do his thing. Hi, I'm Jason Freed. I'm the executive officer for Marin Lafco. Started uh, last June as a consultant, was hired on as staff starting January 2nd. So, still relatively new to Marin Lafco. Uh, the report that you have in front of you is, uh, as was stated, is open for public comment. Um, anyone, either the board as an official body, can comment, you as individuals. People can comment, anyone from the public can comment. We want to encourage anyone that wants to read it and comment on it to do so. Um, the highlights of what a municipal service review is, there's two main parts of what a municipal service review does. One is we review the agency itself, make sure that everything is functioning correctly, that, that things are working properly. Um, we look at your short-term and long-term uh, budgeting plans to make sure that things are matching up, that you're not like ignoring the fact that you have a huge building that needs to be repaired or replaced in a few years and you have no money to, to actually do the work. So we take a, a big picture look and just make sure that, that everything is, is, is in good shape. And then the other part is, and this is more for cities than for, for special districts, is we look at your boundaries. Are you looking to change your boundaries in any way? Um, and if you are, we then take a little bit deeper dive into what services you currently provide and, and how the border changes would potentially impact the services you provide. And are you, if like, let's say you're looking to expand your boundaries, and I know you're not doing that here, but if you were looking to expand your boundaries, we'd say, well, how do you then take these new people in? Can you get enough money from them to pay for these services that you also need to provide to those people? So since you're not doing the second part of it, the main focus is really just that municipal service review. 
Um, you will see that there's a section specifically guided just for Marin Wood. We get into a little bit of history, a little bit of background, so people have a, an understanding of what it is if they don't physically live here. Um, and then we get into a, a section, what I call section 12, which is the very end of the last section, where we get into some recommendations, things we've noticed uh, for you to consider. Um, there are kind of two big areas that I would say Marin Wood falls into in, in section 12 that, that I would want you to pay attention to um, and hopefully look at it. One is capital improvement programs. Um, the version that you got, you do have some, you, you do look a little bit into the future, but at the end of the day, we would like a little bit more in-depth look at your capital improvement program. Um, you after your neighbors in Santa Fe actually happen to have a very detailed one. I know you're not a big city, so you don't need to have as much as they do as far as everything they do. But having a more detailed capital improvement program and making sure that you're really paying attention to those long-term costs uh, can be very important, especially for a small district and a district like yours that had, that I don't believe has very high turnover in home ownership, which means your property taxes are lower than what they are in other parts of the county because you don't have people turning over their homes and those resale values when they go up because of Prop 13, you have, you have people who have had homes here for a long time. Your your property, the amount that you get in property taxes is less. So paying close attention to your improvements, uh, long-term improvements is necessary. The other end of what I would say is probably the bigger one is the fire services. Um, I know that you've been working with uh, San Rafael and you recently brought in their fire chief to help you know, share services, which is a great thing. Something actually that one of our that MSRs is on the side supposed to look at is there ways to better improve services and sometimes shared services is the way to do it. So we're very happy that Santa Fe and Marin would have combined services for at least the fire chief and a few administrative support staff of his to uh, be here helping you out. You still have your own independent fire department, but you're sharing services, which is cost effective. Um, one of the things that we do want to look at, though, is is that long term, what is the, in the best interest of everyone for fire services? And this is not just a Marin County thing, this is actually a statewide thing. There's a lot more discussion about consolidation and trying to figure out if there's better ways to serve uh, the residents by consolidating fire services because they are not they are not cheap services to offer and the more shared services you have, the more combined services that you do, the more cost effective it tends to be in most cases. It's not every single case, and so that's why we like to take them on one, one thing at a time. One of the recommendations that's gonna come out from LAFCO on the fire services is we wanna form a working group that has San Rafael, Marinwood, uh, the CSAs that are, that are out in this area that also do fire services. You actually do fire services for one of the CSAs you there to contract with you. So we want to bring everyone to the table and say, look, we know how things were set up and they were set up for a reason and they were probably good, but it's been a long time since these services were set up. Let's take a step back and say, how would we set up services today and is there a, a working function way? One of the big issues that we're going to have here in this area is you have different retirement systems. And I'm not just talking like you have employees who are under different, you're under completely different systems. You have San Rafael that uses MSERA, Marin County's retirement system, and you use CalPERS, which is the state's retirement system. Both of them are functioning good, good bodies, but they have slightly different ways in which they approach things, which means costs are slightly different between how you look at it. The, the recent recession that we had um, has caused both of those retirement systems to fall a little bit behind and they're now trying to catch up and they have different paths for catching up. I, and I will say someone who is in an MSERA program said to me, one of the representatives said, they have taken a more aggressive path where they're putting costs more on, on the front end of trying to catch up, where CalPERS is taking a little bit slower path. So you have that divergence. So trying to figure out how do we work that in if we're going to, if we did get to a point where everyone said, let's merge our services together, how do we deal with that retirement system is going to be key and important to, to the process. And the MSR helps identify that, and one of the things that comes out of the MSR is let's sit down and actually start working things out. I, one of the things I, my personal opinion is I hate writing reports that then just get put up on a shelf and collect dust. The reports that we put together with, under, under my control here at, at Marin Lafco are going to have action items that come out of it, and either Marin Lafco, if it's something that's specific to us, being the person to be in charge of it, or sometimes we'll say, hey, this is something that two other people need to do. It's not really our jurisdiction to do, but we're just going to give you suggestions. Like the capital improvement program, that's just a suggestion to you. The fire thing, that's going to be something that we're going to be more heavily involved with talking about for two reasons. One is it's one of LAFCO's roles. Two is I realize that you have one person. I don't want him sitting on one side of the table and having to get up, walk to the other side of the table and negotiate with himself. It's good to have a third party in that room when you have someone who represents both sides uh, there just to make sure everything is, is, is 
flowing and, and working smoothly. So I do look forward to hopefully after this working with the fire chief. I actually this morning was in a meeting with, with your fire chief because I was talking with uh, some folks in San Rafael about this very same thing with their city council. One of their committees met this morning and we we're having a similar discussion as this. So that's the high level of what's in it. I'm happy to answer any questions that you may have. I want to encourage you, if you have comments, please submit them both either on your individual section if we got anything wrong, although we worked with your staff. Your staff was great and wonderful in making sure that we did as best we could to get everything correct, factually correct in it. And then section 12, which is what do we need to do moving forward. So that is all, that's all my prepared comments right now. Okay, thank you. Does anyone have any questions or comments from the board? Um, so, Jason, uh, you implied in the um, report that um, our JPA might need to be reviewed by NAFCA, the yes. newest one. Um, has a final determination been made if, indeed, it needs to be reviewed? And one of the things that I think what we're saying is when you're moving forward in the future, when you're doing shared services, there is something referred to as out-of-service agreements, and those are supposed to come to LAFCO for review. I have not had, because this that agreement was done before I was here, I have not had really a chance to go back and talk to my predecessor to say, did anyone ever come to us and talk to us about it first? And I, I it needs to get a little bit more into the weeds of exactly what is that shared service. The one that you have probably doesn't need too much review of LAFCO. What, I don't know if it would need, one thing we're trying to figure out is does it need official LAFCO approval on it? It's already being done and it's working, so we're not going to stop it from occurring um, because that's, that's clearly not in anyone's best interest to stop that agreement. So I want to make sure that that, that is not going to be occurring. We're not going to look to stop the agreement. It's just a matter of should someone technically have come to us and should we put some sort of stamp on it before it happened. I so, think one of the reasons why you know you're asking this question yeah. now is because LAFCO was in a turmoil as well yeah. itself. Correct. And I don't believe we really had a way of communicating and that is quite possible so that's a, that's one of the things is there's unfortunately not the greatest record keeping from for a small period in there and that's when this occurred so at the end of the day it's working we're not going to stop it it's just a question of should we have should something come to us and should we just for lack of a better put a stamp on it and say yeah no this is the right thing to do we our MSR says this is the right thing to do it's just it didn't come to us initially and, I'm sorry, and maybe the your might know if it actually ever came to us. I, right. Well, I was going to add on. So, the, the actual shared services agreement, the primary agreement, is before my time. So, yeah. I'm not going to really comment on that. That was what 2013, I think. Yeah. The, uh, the take, you know, a couple of these different contracts. So, what Jason is talking about is actually a relatively recent piece of legislation involving these outside contracts. But for things like our contract with CSA 13. Uh, we don't have to go to LAFCO for that. This is a recurring annual renewal, yeah. things like that. And I did talk to, at the time, who was the interim LAFCO executive officer, because it, it also fell into these exemptions where it affected less than 25% of the total yeah. employee that's count, what, what everything else. So LAFCO was consulted, um, and they basically came back and said, no, we, don't, we don't need to be involved in the chief officer. So that might need to be reflected in the report. Feel free to put that in your in your uh, if, if, to the review. I'll make note of it, but also if you're writing official comments to us, feel free to put those in there too. Um, and I will also add on my behalf, not necessarily representing the entire board, but um, I am very much in favor of us uh, not only becoming a, a part of a regional fire services working group, mm -hmm. I believe you name it, but I also believe it. it that really makes sense from a um, uh, management point of view uh, to consider one fire agency in, in Hermarin County. I mean, I really don't understand why with uh, the population in Moreno being, I believe it's 260,000 roughly, uh, we have 11 fire departments versus San Francisco population has 890,000 people and what? So, um, other efficiencies to be had? Definitely. Yeah. Uh, is it something that um, I think needs to be really spearheaded by an organization like yourself, like yours? Definitely. Yeah, no, we are definitely going down that path. It, it's one of the things to keep in mind is I always say if you look at why Marine is set up the way it is, it makes perfect sense because there was all these small little pockets that weren't ever officially connected. 
As Marin has grown, all these small little pockets have started to become connected, but no one's ever really organized the government. And in some cases, there are people who say, no, we want to keep our small little thing because we like what we do here. We do something different than the neighbor next to us. And so it's, it's a question of how do you keep that local flavor while you're also getting efficiencies in the system. Right, but you also know, I'm sure, very well that there are certain things that give you local flavor, but yeah. no, um, it, fire department being almost a paramilitary organization, there is not really much flavor. There is a very good uniformity across the, correct. I would imagine, departments for everybody's safety yes. and for ease of organization. So it only makes sense, but that's no, I, the I, I personally, I agree with you, but there is that, you know, there are some folks who are like, we, we have, our, our little fire department does something different than the other ones, and so we want to make sure that that stays in place. And it's, it goes, to be fair, it goes on just fire departments. It also goes into a lot of other services that are provided in the county where there's a lot of small little agencies that do similar services right next to each other. So it's a combination of, of all of that. Economies of scale. Yeah. Let's end with that. <laughs> other questions, comments from the board? Yeah. No? Yeah, I do. Yeah. Yeah, um, I read your your paper with interest. Um, I'm not entirely convinced that a merger or a JPA is in the best interest of this district when it comes to fire service. Um, we had an independent fire service um, decades ago, and it made sense at that point in time. It no longer makes sense for this community. Um, whether or not we still have a fire department in Marin is a question. Due to the pension obligations that um, don't seem to be worked on at all at a governmental uh, level, we're probably going to find ourselves in, the, in a completely cash poor position within the next four years. Um, so we will be looking at alternatives other or in, in addition to mergers and JPAs, and that is abandoning the fire department entirely and outsourcing. So. Is that something that you would be involved in? That would be something we'd definitely be involved with because you cannot abandon unless there's someone else to take care of I understand services. that. So, it's yes, going to be that would be part of this working group would be what is in the best interest of the community? How do Correct. we how do we serve? So I don't want to say don't just be like it's not just a GPA or it's not just mm -hmm. it's it could be a, a number of different things. I want the working group is going to look at what is in the best interest of the San Rafael region as a whole and how do we deal with it? And it, it's good you are right. You are looking at either if let's just say today we had that solution and we said, okay, retirement and you're gonna go over to San Rafael and you need to pay a bunch of money to, to get your retirees up to the same level as their retirees. And like something's going to need to occur because everything that at least the early indications are, you are farther behind in your retirement obligations than San Rafael is right now. And I, I could be wrong on that, but the indications are that there's a little bit of that going on. So we need to figure out how to catch you up because I can't allow you to go over to San Rafael and give them a huge obligation that they then can't get themselves. That's not fair to San Rafael to put them into a, a tough spot. So we need to figure out how do we get you and them at the same level so that there is, and it might be that there's some sort of like, hey, we need to create some sort of special payment system that for a few years, you can't afford to do it all in one year, but maybe we figure out a way to do a special tax or we figure out this in your own budget how you find a way to chip a little bit off and, and we figure out a way to pay for it and then San Rafael says okay we're going to be we're not hurting by doing this and it actually is more beneficial to have us together so we merge you together whether it's a JPA or San Rafael just takes on the fire services out here mm -hmm. there's a lot of different there's several options and we are not going to limit what the options are when we start looking it's going to be what makes the most sense and in a lot of ways it's going to be fire chief what makes the most sense for both groups? Because mm -hmm. um, he's going to be the one that's going to be, uh, you know, telling us what's in the best interest. Yeah. I am not a fire expert. I do have someone on staff who's a former fire jumper and knows a little bit about fire, mm -hmm. but I am not that person myself. Yeah, we've done a little bit of an investigation in this, yeah. and I don't think necessarily any um, obligation, pension obligation, um, that we've already um, incurred would transfer to another organization. Well, that's, that's what you have to, in order for you to transfer, if like, let's just say that you said, okay, we're no longer doing fires, the Redwood CSD, and our employees are going to someone, whoever it is, whether it's an independent contractor, whether it's San Rafael, whether it's some JPAs, whatever, whoever it is, those employees have a right to a pension in the future, and whoever covers that, you got to figure out how those employees get covered in the future. Mm -hmm. And this is a, a huge, I mean, there was two fire departments recently merged in uh, Larkspur and Port Madera, 
they merged theirs. They actually went through a LAFCO process to merge their two uh, things and created the JPA. Mm -hmm. And that took them three years to go through CalPERS to figure out how to do it correctly. Understood. So this is not a quick and easy solution, but it's something at least we now have a sample of one that's been done. So let's figure out if we Those can create Those are both a, CalPERS organizations? They happen to be both CalPERS, which made it easier. Here we're dealing with CalPERS, and if we went with San Rafael and right. Sarah. Yeah, and San Rafael's basically um, accelerated its payoffs and yeah. its pensions. Well, that's M. Sarah has done that. It's not necessarely San Rafael. It's actually the M. Sarah process is, is farther ahead than CalPERS is. Understood. Okay. Can I check? But the, my understanding, again, is that on something like this, whether you go to a different one or the same, the burden that we've incurred during the deployment of them here, that stays with us. That doesn't carry over. In fact, it would impact us more because we're one of the lower paying ones. So. As they move on, they're going to most likely be making more, which makes their ultimate payout at the time of retirement higher. And that's what CalPERS would be collecting it on. It wouldn't be any different than if one of our firefighters voluntarily resigned because they got hired on with a different agency. And that agency could be an MSARA, it could be a different county yeah. agency. So they would be taking on the burden from that point in time. The burden that they would be taking on is the fact that uh, some of these may be, you know, quote unquote, classic. Uh, employees, as opposed to their ability to hire a PEPRA employee. So yeah. obviously a classic employee at a uh, classic plan rate is a much larger burden for them to take on than hiring a new employee who may not be in a classic level. But they wouldn't necessarily be taking over our either our unfunded or our previously earned. It really depends on how everything gets set up. Right. There are ways where if an agency could say, we're taking on that whole response. Like, it really depends on how the final details work out as to whether or not what you're saying happens or not. Right. Um, so it's really, that's why it's really important that we like take a very deep dive and not just talk about high level stuff, but we actually are looking at, you know, we get Gatsby reports, we do all of the sure. stuff that needs to be done to make sure that we know everything before it, it ever occurs. And if we go down one path, it means X. If we go down a different path, it means Y. Understanding what those differences are, figuring out which is the best path for everybody involved to make sure that we're covering it correctly. And just following up with what you just said, uh, if you can find that agency that's willing to take on all of our pension debt, will you go ahead and get a call? I will do that. I, if I find one, I'll be, I'll be good sending my agency there first, but I'll give you a call second. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Jason. Uh, anything else from the board? Comments from the public? Okay, so that concludes our meeting. Thank you very much. Yes, I have a question uh, for you. If Part of your current uh, North uh, Marine study, are you doing any sort of a study now or do you contemplate in the future doing one of County Service Area 13? That is actually part of the same report. It's in there. It's in the report. It's currently in the report, so if you go to our website, you can pull up the report, or if you come to our office, we can print up a copy for you if you need it. Yeah, because I don't believe uh, anybody from LAFCO has contacted our board. We have got, because the your board is actually you're talking about your CAC. We have been in contact with the county staff. It is up to the county staff whether or not they want us to come to a board meeting or not. So if you would like well, us to be at a board problem. meeting. Uh, I'm chairman of the advisory council for CSA yes. 13. And we have a little bit of a problem with the county uh, grabbing our money for various and assorted bureaucratic functions, which may or may not be proper. Well, I would encourage you then to get a copy of the report, write a bunch of public comment, and submit it for us, and we can take a look at it as part of the public comment process. Do you have uh, a staff that's uh, available five days a week in an office? Yes. Where's that? We are. You've been to our office. You've been into my into my office actually when I first started. We are over at the 1401 Los Gamos, right past the uh, YMCA. If you go to that bland building right at the end of the of Los Gamos. Oh, okay. I thought you were. Uh, and San Rafael. That is technically that is a mailing address to San Rafael. I'm not sure if we're technically in the city boundaries or not. No, I thought you had an office uh, no. down by the uh, the railroad tracks in downtown San no. Rafael. Uh, Bill, well, I guess that was before your tenure. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, you're in that uh, still in yeah. that last building. Uh, Correct. On which town? Yep, we're still there. So. We are there from 9 to 5 every day, Someone, except for next Monday our office will be closed because all the staff will be at a meeting in Sacramento uh, talking about MSR stuff. Um, but otherwise, we are open every day. Okay, I'll stop by. Thank okay. you. Are there comments from the public? I just would like to know how your name is spelled. Fried, F-R-I-E-D, spelled like fried. Thank you. Mm -hmm. 
Responses are actually a draft response and a, and a proposed uh, that response. Um, and I can let Chief Gray speak to this a little bit more, but there was a, in a, in what I feel is a very smart way to respond to this report that called for a county wide uh, approach to solving the problem that they recognized. Uh, there was a, a county wide gathering to create a unified response. That unified response is included here and was submitted by the vast majority of cities and other uh, local districts through collaboration with each other. Um, I certainly recommend that we also submit this unified response, and I've also drafted uh, with some consultation, some supplemental comments uh, to a few of those responses that are a little bit more specific to the district. Uh, nothing of too earth shattering significance in there, but uh, a lot of pointing out that some of these recommendations are completely beyond the authority uh, or scope of power of the district, and I said there's absolutely nothing we can do about it. Um, and then just a couple other little comments in there. Um, if Chief Gray would like to. Um, tag on that. Admittedly, he's been much more involved, especially on the unified as well as the, the entire preparedness effort that has been ongoing for quite some time, well before the grand jury made a report about it. Uh, thank you, Eric. Uh, members of the board, this is a very comprehensive effort, and it obviously it's, it's heading us uh, after uh, two very serious uh, years of uh, fire losses in Northern California. So I say, before uh, in here, uh, we're living on a powder keg, um, as, as stated. And I don't know that that's an exaggeration um, when it comes to continued climate change and what we're really facing, and some terms of uncertainty. Um, and as much as uh, the recent earthquakes in Southern California were, again, a reawakening point, don't forget about the earth shaking as well. Um, I think the overall theme is we need to be prepared for a number of the different uh, eventualities. And certainly um, wildfire preparedness and this new approach um, is, I'll tell you, well underway. And I'll contrast it to what's been going on uh, really since post-World War II in California, which is, generally speaking, um, a state that responds together to emergencies regardless of jurisdictional boundaries. And we do that in a seamless way throughout Marin, and that uh, continues throughout the state of California. And it is really one large response force, which is completely reactive. So the, the, the novel concept, and what one I, I believe in, is taking a similar approach on a preventive and preparedness basis um, to uh, what we're doing in a response, um, uh, but on a day-to-day -day basis forming a JPA, uh, having a consistent way to address defensible space um, around improved structures, uh, defensible space around open space, creating uh, fire breaks working consistently from community to community, um, using essentially a common staff, um, using uh, fire crews, uh, fuel crews, if you will, uh, common messaging, uh, public education, and really much like which was brought up um, earlier in our discussion uh, regarding LAFCO and the one agency, um, this would be a unified approach that we would have consistent uh, codes and ordinances relative to vegetation management. And um, I would just tell you that the JPA is currently in formation. And uh, much in what has been outlined here is actually underway, as, as Eric said. Uh, we hope to have a JPA uh, formed um, by as early as October in order to qualify a measure for the ballot in March of 2020. What's lacking?
lacking here is funding. And so that's going to require either a sales tax or a parcel tax. And uh, Eric has written in here relative to the district's position um, with a, a sales tax and a parcel tax. Um, but we're not able to, and I can speak for San Rafael, we're not able to achieve the levels that are necessary uh, for uh, vegetation management and wildfire preparation with existing funding levels. Um, so new funding is, ne is necessary. Uh, there is recently a countywide uh, poll that was done. Did any of you participate in the, in the poll that was done uh, by the county? You, you, you would have received a, an email or a text message from the county fire chief. That's how they came out. But it was a, a poll where thousands of uh, residents within the county uh, were asked to weigh in on this uh, countywide approach, a unified response to uh, prevention and preparedness, and then weigh in on how they felt about uh, taxation in order to support. And uh, so tomorrow I'll be going to a meeting with some other uh, uh, part of the county leadership team uh, that's uh, involved in the formation of the JPA. Um, and we'll be talking about the results of the poll. So by, before the next meeting, I'll be able to report back on that and some additional progress. But we're very optimistic. I think it's, uh, we're, um, fortunately, as in most cases, what happens is a terrible tragedy occurs and then changes are promulgated following that. And here again, we're, we're doing this. However, I think uh, the time is right and we appear to have the support uh, fires don't know boundaries, and either should these efforts. You know, uh, we're, we're doing vegetation management on one side of the street because it's in one jurisdiction, and the other side of the street's not getting the same level of attention. You know, if you do everything right and your neighbor does nothing, your neighborhood's still at risk. And so hopefully we can level the playing field, do this in a unified way, and I think uh, ultimately be a community in much better uh, shape to respond to the, the wildfire threat that's ever present. I, I may add, too, although it's not necessarily represented completely in support, um, there's obviously things that we haven't had the ability to influence, such as the public safety power shutoff that's been now um, approved for use by all of the public utilities in the state of California, which is a preemptive power shutoff. Now, certainly, I think we all rely on, on power for various means, but um, under certain conditions now, uh, PG&E will actually make an effort, and this would include red flag, um, ongoing wind speeds of 25 miles an hour with gusts up to and above 45 miles an hour, uh, low humidity, uh, dry fuel, and other, any other field observations that were made. Uh, they will go ahead and uh, initiate a preemptive power shutoff, and they you probably have heard they have these areas that are uh, tiered, so one, two, and three. One being, um, and some of this is misleading, but it's been done on a state basis, and I say that because what's the difference between a tier one and a tier three? Sometimes it's a, a, a few hundred yards, and the, the power company also doesn't have the ability to, to control sections where they say, and we have a portion of the, the valley here that's in the tier three, and you'll see it on a CPUC map, it's red, uh, portions of San Rafael. Uh, a lot of the county is in a tier two area, but rest assured, if they decide to shut the power off, most all of us are gonna be affected. And even the utilities are struggling with, as when I say that, I mean that um, the water districts, the uh, communication providers, and the uh, sanitary sewer providers, are struggling with not having the ability to potentially field the use of their facilities under emergency power for 48, 72, 96 hours. Because the difference with the public safety power shutoff is it's going to require restoration, not automatically, but manually, followed a, a, a physical inspection of the infrastructure because they don't want to re-energize all of the infrastructure if it had failed at some point and then would start fires. So it's um, going to be interesting. There's a lot more questions and answers. There's a regional meeting um, on Thursday evening at San Rafael City Hall to talk about this specifically. Uh, PG&E made a presentation that I attended last week. Um, they've got a, a comprehensive 
um, outline of that, and I'll make sure that this gets posted uh, so we have this available to our residents on the, the website along with some other information. And I can tell you on a response basis, um, there's also, and we're calling it not PSPS, but an electrical system de-energization response plan. But we're also looking at this because what else goes? Traffic signals. <coughs> Cell phone towers, I mentioned those earlier, but generally speaking, they only have battery backup and for about four hours. So this is going to require, you know, really looking at this in a comprehensive way. How do we address all the ATMs, uh, service stations? You won't be able to get fuel. Service stations do not have emergency generators. So, and then the public reacting to this and everyone wanting to try to, you know, be self-sufficient and people potentially purchasing emergency generators, gasoline, all sorts of things. So there's a lot of things out of this wildfire preparedness that are now coming. And one, this is how PG&E is getting prepared. They're saying, well, we're going to shut off the electricity, therefore we won't cause a fire that we've unfortunately caused in the past. So going forward, that's a, you know, a mitigation measure for them and loss control. So anyway, it's a kind of a new reality for us all and we'll continue to bring you information as it becomes available. And uh, I hope to have more to report on next month as a follow-up to that. Hardly wait until September. I found it interesting, um, the two different schools of thought on how to provide funding. Yes. One through a ballot measure and one through a sales tax. They both have risks. Yes. You know? And they, and could, they, both, they both could fail. They could. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and, they both have to go to the ballot. Oh, I understand. I understand. That's just um, funding property You know, property. sales tax could be volatile. Yes. And, um, you know, citizens in Marin um, are probably, what, what did they say? Getting deaf to Nixle was one of the things they were talking about. Well, I think Marin's getting deaf to uh, tax, tax measures. Tax <laughs> <laughs> you know, and that, that's a risk, too. It is, it is a risk. So, And then we're going to have to, if it fails, we're going to have to all come up with a different game plan. Mm -hmm. so, and we're starting to prepare for that. Yeah, yeah. understood. Other questions, comments from the board? Um, I just want to uh, thank Eric for preparing a very good response to all the points that were um, really specific. And uh, ask the chief, um, do you think that um, there is an opportunity for the fire commission to be proactive ahead of this unified effort and uh, maybe reach out to the community being whether it would be I don't know mailers or like meetings slash presentations on yes. social media or would that be duplication of efforts and ahead of well, uh, direct, uh, my hope is that it will be a coordinated effort and that will be something that the fire commission can be involved in. We plan to do that. And we're anticipating a, to be a, a mailer here shortly, um, living with fire in Marin. Uh, that will have a cover letter on it, but it's going to go to all the Marin Wood residents. And it's a 47-page document kind of outlining a number of factors that will help residents uh, prepare. So that will be one of our initial steps and maybe doing some community meetings as well. Thank you. Anything else from the board? Comments from the public? Stephen? Yeah, um, I'm glad we're addressing this issue. My concern, uh, Chief Gray, is for uh, people with medical needs, medical equipment, and a lot of these people are seniors. I don't think they necessarily have backup generators. Um, I, th this whole effort seems to me, I mean, just it feels like blackmail by PG&E, but, um, you know, if this moves forward, we really need to reach out to the community so we don't leave grandma without an ox oxygen generator. I mean, it's just, it's, it's really appalling to me. Further comments from the public? Right, moving it back to the board. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries unanimously. Moving on to item G3, district manager's report. Back to Eric. Um, this had already obviously come up earlier. Uh, just confirming that uh, we did submit our DARP application uh, regarding the pit panhandle sinkhole. They do have 30 days. Uh, to either approve as presented, approve with specified modifications, or request additional 
information, um, I am generally expecting them to approve as presented uh, based on some prior conversations as well as a, a very complete, um, thorough uh, application that was submitted. Um, and we have received bids, talked to several people in one bid about the actually lining the uh, storm drain was through the same company that was recommended through the county um, through this process. Uh, and it's probably about 25 to 30 percent of the cost of actually taking up a giant trench, removing the pipe, putting a new pipe in, refilling, doing all of that. So this is, again, absolutely the recommended way to go. Uh, assuming that DARPA and everything can proceed as projected, uh, we're hoping that September to get this work done and it should be done uh, the completed cure, uh, curing time, everything prior to the rainy season. So that's where we are with that. It's uh, in the hands of some of the regulatory agencies. Um, on park maintenance facility, same process. Uh, we will, by the end of this month, be uh, submitting the additional information and documentation that was requested. Uh, again, the plan has not changed. And it's the same plan that has gone through. They just asked for additional information. Uh, we are just uh, trying to get some final clarifications on them as to what will satisfy those requests. And primarily on some of their requests that kind of go farther in, in our opinion, as far as uh, they do actual building permits, uh, talking about civil engineering and things like that, whether we actually need to start contracting civil engineering at this point for a project that hasn't even gone through the design review stage yet. So we'll be there. Uh, let you know when that is uh, some work back. Otherwise, uh, Tiffany and myself have been working hard, uh, as have a lot of the staff, just to make sure that everything's in on our fiscal year end as we start to prepare for closing out our books. Um, obviously, we're a little bit dependent on the county on some of these things. I anticipate all the way through July, some of our uh, funding will be coming in and posted as of 6.30. Um, so there's not a heck of a lot we can do close out until all of our taxes, even when I say funding, I apologize, uh, taxes as well as reported interest for Q4 for our funds held in the Treasury. Uh, and then the other thing I did want to bring up that I didn't uh, actually list on here, um, but kind of hit me, is uh, I have, uh, am expecting the county to begin work on the Ponte Trail project that was presented to this board and uh, approved and authorized for me to move forward uh, with them. Uh, I expect that to actually start this month. Uh, awesome. All right, thank you. Any questions, comments from the board? Yeah, I have a couple of questions. Yep. Um, so, if the um, if the JARPA application is approved, it will be approved by July 16th. Why do we wait until the middle of September? Is this a, because the the folks that have bid on the project won't be available until the middle of, middle of September? Yeah, that's the scheduling that we're looking at. That is. Uh, yeah, they wanted to get it on the schedule and start penciling it in, and we also wanted to put in a buffer zone in case they do come back with additional information requested or other modifications. It gives us time to react to that. Plus, a lot of it also has to do with uh, uh, rainy seasons, making sure that there's as little water as possible flowing through the creek at that point in time is the most space at the outfall, even though part of the project already has a uh, containment plan at the outfall as well. Okay. Um, longevity of the inner seal? I mean, did they give you Longer than you and me. Yeah? yeah okay. <laughs> well, that's not very long. <laughs> anyway, so <laughs> it's, a spun, it's a spun concrete okay. inner seal. This isn't like a latex or another plastic. I mean, this is basically becomes a hardened cured concrete on the inside of it. Okay. Very good. And um, the bid includes filling and stabilizing correct. the entire area. Yep. Correct? Okay. Great. Thank you. Any other questions, comments from the board? Questions, comments from the public? Linda? Well, I think I'm a little confused here because we just did the district manager report, right? Number three. And for number two, the board action says approve. Was that approved? Yes. When? Just before, like five minutes ago, mm -hmm. I didn't see anybody's hands raised or anybody ask for a motion or anything. I called the question and everyone said I. I'm sorry. I called the question and everybody said I. Motion carried unanimously. Oh, okay. Not much discussion. Thank you. Thank you. Um, 
Okay, does your manager's report, Stephen? Uh, yeah, so two things. First of all, Eric, I, I like I like the plan that that's, uh, is least disruptive to our parks and uh, sounds like a good plan. Um, last month, you, uh, the board granted uh, Eric uh, the ability to contract up to $60,000. Not sure exactly how you, you put it. I did just, and I watched the uh, PNR commission meeting and I was a little bit distraught that he didn't solicit additional bids. His explanation was that there are not a lot of people that do it and the person was well recommended, which is great, um, but uh, that's not how we get our best pricing. We need to have three bids and so I hope the board would pay attention to that so we don't spend money needlessly. Now secondly, um, the uh, the maintenance facility project is kind of being uh, described as just a few little problems and and point of fact I think we've got major problems not only are we 300 percent of initial budget but we have a plan that violates so many of the count, uh, county ordinances and it actually violates physical needs of uh, the department if you uh, want to see, I've got something prepared to show you exactly why the uh, Hansel plan is not going to make it as a, uh, uh, as a landscaping maintenance facility. Would you like to see it? Thank you for your comment. Um, so that's a no? Leah, you don't want to let me show you why no, it doesn't work? No, we're not doing new business right now. This is a comment on the district manager's report. So well, uh, and I'm commenting on what he was commenting on. So I, I simply want to get on record that it's physically impossible to have a 40-foot, uh, you have a truck that has a 60-foot turning radius and a space that is approximately 60 feet in front of the facility. What that means is the plan that Bill Hansel created is not going to be able to be greened out and beautiful like he said. It's going to just be a big box with uh, a uh, parking lot in front of it. And it will require also a turnaround facility in the meadow to the east. These areas have not been studied. Um, and, you know, it's, it's actually incredible to me that this plan actually even got submitted uh, knowing some of these flaws and uh, you know there's a whole list of them he, uh, it is non-compliant with the standards that the county requires and you can see it in their extensive comments and before we spend way too much money on this project let's evaluate it and make the, uh, the best choice um, my recommendation is to go with Irv Schwartz's recommendation known as option three, which is a long, narrow facility. Stephen, can you please wrap it up? You're well over three minutes. I'm not timing tonight, but please wrap it up. And I would hope that you would listen because you are spending the public's money. We could have gotten this done for, for $40,000, completed a, a, a uh, modular unit and the justification of spending all this money with an ex lover or uh, uh, or ex, uh, ex uh, CSD director is completely inappropriate. Thank you for your comment. Um, all right, moving on to item H, fire department matters. Item one, chief officer report and activity summary. Has everyone had a chance to review? Yep. All right, Chief Craig? Thank you very much. It was uh, my pleasure to actually, I guess, officially participate in the community uh, pancake breakfast that's uh, put on by the fire department here for the first time this year, although we've attended, I think, since starting in 2007. But uh, nevertheless, this was very special, and uh, it really is, um, from an insider and an outsider's perspective, and my family's uh, participated as, as well. I know my wife Cynthia here is with us tonight, but um, 
came by. It really is a tremendous community event. And what a foundation we have of the volunteer firefighters actually assisting. 14 of our volunteer firefighters uh, fully participated. We had a, a very uh, well-organized event um, without any mishaps or, or uh, safety problems. And everyone looked very well fed um, and with smiles on their faces. So um, anyway, it's just terrific. And I just wanted to say thank you. And I think the volunteers were able to raise about $5,000. So uh, that's a good thing as well. Um, speaking of uh, firefighters, we will have a new firefighter uh, in Marinwood within our midst. Um, we have a fire academy starting uh, next week at uh, the new training tower at uh, Station 52. And so hopefully in uh, six weeks, um, we'll have a new fire, fire paramedic on staff. And um, as, uh, speaking with uh, our, our captain, uh, Papa Nicolau today will be at full staff for probably the first time in many years. So we're really looking forward to that. How many years? More than five. All right. But there's still no relief fire right <laughs> so that's not really full staff. Well, it's full. It's, it'll be full staff, um, and so hopefully um, we'll be in a good uh, position going forward. We're in the process of uh, scheduling uh, an engineer exam. Um, after uh, John's promotion, and so we'll be having that in the upcoming months. Um, I want to amplify the comments made earlier about uh, Eric and his role in uh, preparing a response to the uh, wildfire report from the Marin Civil Grand Jury, and uh, what a pleasure it is to work with him. We have uh, a couple of new vegetation management uh, inspectors starting in uh, San Rafael that will be assisting in Marinwood this month, uh, including one that is an arborist which will be quite helpful. Uh, oftentimes we get into um, spirited conversations regarding trees and all uh, plant types. So uh, it'll be very helpful, I think, to have uh, Matthew uh, here and assisting us. Uh, also wanted to mention that we had a really um, significant uh, effort put forth that included uh, Marinwood CERT volunteers and San Rafael uh, CERT volunteers staffing a booth at the Marin County Fair. So the best thing about the fair is that it's uh, you know, well attend attended and everyone has a good time. Um, the second best thing is the fire chief breathes easy when all the fireworks are over with and we haven't had any problems. So the only real mishap this year was on the first night um, between the sound check uh, when the uh, musical performance is complete, there's, there's a musical performance sound and then there's fireworks sound and a little bit of choreography that goes on. So they did a check check between each other uh, over radios, and somehow someone said, good to go, and they launched the fireworks at 9.05 instead of 9.30 on the third. <laughs> um, and so it's still a little bit light, and uh, no one was quite ready for them, but the way they went, and, uh, anyway, they were able to correct that. The, uh, the remaining four nights, but uh, went, went off without uh, any problems. So, um, and uh, locally, uh, we only had uh, one fireworks-related uh, fire that we're aware of, at least that was reported, and that we suppressed. So overall, we did a pretty good engine. 58 was busy, as all our crews were, and uh, did a real good job out there. So anyway, that's all I have to report. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions, comments from the board? How does a resident utilize or um, get the vegetation ins inspector um, to come and visit? They, just, they, they can either contact uh, Engine 58, they can contact Eric, contact myself, our offices. So, uh, yes. Okay, is there a priority for WI properties or, you know, we, we even all, those of us that are? Everyone, yes. everyone uh, deserves assistance and we'll do our best to provide it as okay. quickly as possible. Great. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Anything else for the board? Questions, comments from the public? Ron? Yes. Uh, I was going to bring this up uh, at a fire commission meeting, but we didn't have one this month. But uh, I was pleased to hear that you have some uh, wildland fire uh, personnel uh, coming on board because uh, the county has been incredibly deficient in fire prevention at what us old timers refer as the county farm area between Juvenile Hall and Lucas Valley Road, that field, 
And unfortunately, uh, the chairman of uh, Parks and Open Space uh, thinks birds and critters are more important than people because with our 40 mile an hour winds down Lucas Alley in the afternoon, if there's any spark, we could lose uh, Idleberry and Appleberry very easily uh, in Marinwood. And perhaps uh, just as serious is the space across the road from the Park and Open Space Ranger office. There's a cemetery there. It, the weeds are three feet high. It's, the county is showing incredible irreverence for that. And it's not necessarily a fire department matter, except that the weeds are three feet high. And I would like uh, San Rafael uh, and Marinwood to put pressure on the county to do some weed abatement north of that road going up the hill because there's, uh, I think, an abandoned single vehicle garage there. Whether anything's stored in there, I don't know. But there's also some abandoned school buildings up the hill a little bit into the west. And that should be taken care of uh, as a prevention uh, exercise. The county has just never bothered to do anything out there. Uh, and plus the fact, as I mentioned, uh, the weeds. Before the lady who took over parks and open space for eight years came into the county, every year that whole field was mowed. She came in and stopped that. Well now, she's gone, but the current head of parks and open space, uh, like I say, is more concerned with critters than he is with people. Right now, if there's a fire in Lucas Valley with a 40 mile an hour wind, we're the endangered species, okay? And that's got to be impressed on the county, but I think perhaps we have to go to the Board of Supervisors to get that taken care of because the guy who's in charge uh, of parks and open space thinks uh, the critters are more important than people. Thank you, Ron. And President Green, I'm happy to contact the director there of MAX um, and uh, follow up with the board. Thank you. Any other comments from the public? Stephen? Uh, yeah, this is just a, a general question uh, concerning uh, uh, preparedness. Um, it, is the fire department the primary agency that would handle a mass evacuation in Marinwood? Actually, the police department, in this case, it would be the Vernon County Sheriff's that would coordinate the evacuation. Okay, so we, there would, was we a, would work hand in hand with them initiating it, but they would actually uh, right. carry it out. Okay, I'm just curious, thanks. Uh, all right, thank you. And the item H2, the date of the next fire commission meeting is August 6th. Moving on to item I, Park and Recreation Matters. Item 1, draft minutes of the PNR commission meeting from oh. June 25th. Has everyone had a chance to review? Yes. Any questions, comments from the board? No. Any questions, comments from the public? Stephen? This is the uh, the, the fire commission? Yes. Yeah. Um, Spark PNR. Okay. Okay. So you you went over the fire commission and you didn't uh, give me a, a chance to talk. Uh, the fire commission has been no, meeting some, every meeting. what? Yes, I understand that, and that's my point. Is that there was no meeting, and not only was there no meeting, there's no re uh, records b apparently being kept. No video records, no audio records, and the only thing that we get in uh, reports for the fire commission is motions. And that is insufficient, especially when half of our budget is being spent with the fire commission. I request that, uh, that they meet in here, that you videotape it, audio tape it, so the public can be informed. This is especially important in building political support for the measures that you want to uh, carry forward in the future. I noticed that Sam Rafael doesn't uh, record them. I'm not quite sure why, but um, okay, in this modern age, there's actually no reason to interrupt me or 
to, uh, to not have that record available for the public. You know, we live in a democracy and you have to communicate with the public. Moving on, so we are. And when you interrupt me, Leah, I'm going to interrupt you back. I'm sorry, but you are not abiding by parliamentary procedures. You're very rude, and I'm I'm really tired of doing this. It's the only defense I have to, to get my voice heard. Thank you. And I would like to say something. Linda, um, I do see a difference between the amount of time you allowed Mr. Marinoff to talk about. The fire department information, you know, the group of information you're supposed to be talking about, and how much time you give to Stephen. There's a disparity there, and I just wanted to make sure you realize that you give Mr. Marinoff this much and Mr. Nessel this much. Thank you for your comment. Uh, back to the draft PR commission minutes. Uh, are there any further comments from the board? Uh, anything else from the public? Yes. Can I speak? Yes, Okay. Um, uh, yeah, it's just a minor thing. I did watch uh, the program, um, which was very helpful. Thank you for providing it. But uh, it doesn't list uh, my quiet wood neighbor there. I'm sure it was an oversight. I know you have information later who she is, but uh, the minute should reflect that she was in attendance. I actually thought it was... Uh, um, Savon from the yeah, back. I did too. Yeah, so. Yeah. Thank you. Um, all right, moving on to item I2, application from resident for appointment to the PR Commission. We have an application. Uh, Eric, do you want to speak for this? Sure. Ann Shawson is a local resident uh, who has got young children, has been involved in our programs, uh, utilizes our facilities quite often and uh, her and I actually engaged in a conversation at one point where uh, I actually started telling her about the commission and then encouraged her to come to a meeting and uh, consider potentially applying uh, and, and the results of that are her letter that you see on the back. Um, the one thing that does need to be decided here because of the way terms work and our vacancies, we have vacancies with various ending dates. One, uh, these are regular positions, not the alternate position. One ends at the end of this calendar year. One ends at the end of the next calendar year. I have spoken to her, as I put in my little memo here, um, and she would prefer to, if, if it is the board's decision to appoint her, then go ahead and appoint her to the term with the latter ending date of December 31st, 2020. Uh, however, she will gladly serve in either term that the board feels most appropriate. Uh, that said, staff recommendation is to appoint her to the vacant position with a term end date of 12 31 2020. I have a motion. I would like to move to appoint Ms. Second. Shawson. Shawson. To the vacant position with the end date 12 31 2020. And a second? Sure. Okay. Any uh, discussion of the board? Okay. No. Uh, comments from the public? Hearing none, um, call the question. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Well, welcome. It's always exciting to get new blood. Uh, let's see. Now we are on item I3, Recreation and Park Maintenance Activity Reports. Turn it you, Luke. Thank you, Leah. Uh, well, we're, we just um, started our fourth week of our summer programming, and um, things are going very well. Uh, I've been very impressed with uh, how smooth the summer camps have been going under Robin's uh, leadership. We have um, just had a lot of positive reviews from parents, um, from the kids, and things are kind of going on, uh, going off without a hitch. Um, so that's been, been a great first three weeks, and going week four is um, first two days in is, is also um, been going extremely well. So it's been fun to see lots of dress up days, lots of exciting uh, themed activities. We've had dunk tanks, dunk tanks, and dance parties, and gold panning in the creek, and all sorts of uh, exciting things. And um, what's that? Uh, yeah, we found some gold. Yeah, uh, they may have been spray painted rocks, but um, we won't tell the kids that. 
so that's been been a lot of fun, and, and the staff have been getting uh, very into it, and it's it's just been a, another so far another um, great energetic summer. So um, we're I'm very excited with with how well things have started this season. Uh, similarly, the pool has been uh, going well uh, with our new supervisor Stephanie uh, taking charge, and um, staff have been doing a great job. The trainings have been well run; uh, they've been running lots of. Um, uh, they call them red shirt drills, but we do practice emergencies where someone will pretend to be drowning and um, the lifeguards are supposed to respond as if it's a real emergency just to sort of test the staff and um, they've been doing really well with that and members of the public have voiced their appreciation that, that the pool seems well run and um, uh, well trained. So I've been very pleased with how Stephanie has stepped into her role and, um, and the staff seem to really like her and been doing well under her leadership. So, uh, and I've been trying to take a step back and not get in the way. So um, that's been going great. Our first music in the park happened uh, Friday the 28th with Justin Schaefer's and the Blind Barbers, um, who I thought were terrific, and I ended up downloading their, um, their album. Uh, we had a good, good turnout, and, and things went really well um, for that first installment. The next one is this Friday, 6 to 8, Paul Fraser, Fraser and the Tarnation. Uh, so I hope everyone's able to make it out. Uh, we're um, excited for another installment and um, uh, things are off to a good start for, for that event as well. Uh, the next event will be our annual Summer Brew Fest on Saturday, July 27th, 3 to 7, um, which will feature uh, local breweries, uh, more live music, and, um, and some food, so that, that should be fun. Uh, on the maintenance side of things, uh, staff have been uh, just trying to keep up with uh, keeping the landscaping fresh with all the foot traffic um, and keeping things clean and, and making repairs as needed. Uh, we just installed a new, um, or, a, or replaced our uh, second heater in the pump room. So we're now working with two functional heaters for the first time in a few, uh, a few years, which, is, um, which has been great. And um, uh, the Genevieve Bolding plaque has been installed just outside the pool entrance, so everyone should uh, take a look. Once the, uh, the big dedication, and then I'll get to that. Okay, <laughs> uh, Eric will speak to that. Uh, amongst other projects, um, so uh, yeah, so far summer's off to a good start, and I'm, I'm pleased with how things are going. Uh, other questions? No questions. Any questions from the board? No. Any questions from the Stephen. Yeah. No questions, but I, I just want to compliment uh, uh, the rec staff again for letting kids be kids. I think that's a secret to your successful programs. Um, I just see all these joyful faces, and it's it's just really inspiring. And I'm I'm so glad we have you and your staff putting together these creative programs. Thank you. Uh, item I-4, date of next Park and Recreation Commission meeting, July 23rd. Moving on to item J-1, new and other business, SDMRA election of their board of directors. Eric, do you want to? Yeah, sure. This is something that you know, happens every couple of years uh, because we're members of the Special District Risk Management Authority, uh, otherwise you know, more commonly referred to as SDRMA. We have a voting right in their um, election for their board of directors. Uh, all of the candidates who are up for election have been listed in there. Uh, as I believe it says on there, you may vote for up to three of the five candidates listed. There's, this is not a ranking. This is just a pick three. Uh, and we go from there and I'll submit it to uh, SDR and from there. Or you can choose to forego it all together if you'd like as well. There's no requirement Vote. All right. Does anybody have a motion? Mm -hmm. I can make a motion to nominate Bob Swan, Patrick Rourke, and Sandy Seifert Raffles on. Second. Second. Uh, any discussion? No, those are three people I would have chosen as well. I think mm -hmm. O'Rourke um, basically presents experience over training. Uh, when compared to Claypool and Mr. Hamlin, didn't seem to have much to say. So, um, <clears throat> but I would say that those three ought to be worthy uh, board members. Okay. Any counsel on the board? Comments from the public? Okay. Hearing none, I'll call the question. All those in favor? Aye. 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 
All right, motion carries. Item J2, request for future meeting agenda items. Anything from the board? Uh, anything, any comments from the public? Stephen? Uh, yes, um, I'd like to see a public meeting discussing uh, the maintenance facility as we had, I think, in whenever, 2017 or 2016, uh, discussing various options. I believe this is important to uh, gather political support behind whatever gets built back there. Um, I think it's actually essential and we don't even know little things like how much it's going to cost and so uh, this was promised to us by the board uh, let's let's see that you guys make it, this happen thanks thank you anything else from the public okay moving on item k recognitions and board member items of interest anything from the board uh, i just want to thank chief gray and fire department for the pancakes breakfast pancakes were excellent ham was excellent was well run it was grandly attended i mean that was really crowded out there all morning so uh, it was perfect thank you thank you i, I think it had to do with having an ihop certified <laughs> <laughs> i wasn't served first <laughs> <laughs> uh, any other recognitions and board member items of interest no i just want to also chime in i have a couple things Chime in with what Bill said. I thought the pancake breakfast was great. It was a, a long line all the way to the very end, but it seemed to move quickly. Uh, I did send uh, uh, the volunteer chief, Greg Stilson, an email, and the volunteers were fantastic, and I wanted to make sure that he knew about the district, uh, how appreciative we were of all their efforts. I was there for a while and never saw anybody complaining, everybody smiling, interacting, moving quickly. And I also wanted to make sure that they knew that while uh, it not only shines well in the department, it shines well on the entire CSD and the district, and I uh, sincerely thank them for that. Um, so hopefully that gets passed on to the group the next uh, volunteer night. Um, I did want to bring one thing up, uh, and Luke had touched on it briefly. Um, the Bolding family, who was incredibly appreciative of uh, the district granting them the ability to put up the plaque, which is right outside the doors um, of the uh, pool facility actually want to and are planning on having a uh, group picnic um, here it says you are invited please join the bolding family in celebrating the dedication of the Marinwood community pool to genevieve jenny bolding they have reserved the group picnic area for the day of sunday july 28th from 11 to 3 uh, and have given a little flyer and certainly want to make sure that uh, not only were the board commissioners staff uh, general public, anybody who knew Jenny and would like to participate, they're planning on bringing plenty of food to a uh, barbecue and have a little party out there, and they're hoping very much so to open it up to the community. Uh, unfortunately, I personally will not be in town that weekend to have a, a family trip planned with extended family, but I'm hoping some people can make it, and I'm sure that they are what as well, so I'm going to hand out flyers, and I have other flyers here. Um, and we'll get the email out. I'm uh, trying to decide how on the appropriateness of using avenues such as next door to uh, uh, the district's next door account. I may uh, use my own personal next door account to uh, advertise this. Um, that's really open to the entire community um, as far as they are concerned. So I just thought that was a very generous gesture on their part. And again, they were really, really appreciative that the board allowed them to put that back up there and recognize them all. Anything else? Any comments from the public? All right, do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Aye.